What responsibilities do you have to your wife's family? A lot of this is quite funny because um, I talked to some expats in private and some of the stuff they get roped into, I do not even understand how they just bend over and take it. Um, but from my own perspective, um, we do help support my in-laws, but they support themselves. What I mean is we built out the apartment rentals. They have their own loan company because uh, we built that loan company up and then we've given it to uh, my in-laws. That's theirs. That pays for their food bills, etc. Um, we built up the Sari Sari store, which is a corner shop. That's theirs. We give that to them. And they're pretty much self-sufficient. But the apartments now, we've got are renting out, and some of that money every month will be put away um, for medical expenses, etc., uh, and build up in a pretty hefty part of an emergency fund. Um, but where's the responsibility? It's not a responsibility to do it. It's um, for me. My in-laws have been great. They've supported everything we've done. Um, they work as hard as we do and a lot of time a lot harder um, they've taken care of me when I've been in the Philippines they made sure that you know I eat every day etc they spent a lot of time um, investing time in me at the same time ask for nothing um, not everybody eats at my table you know I know other people where they get the family round every day every lunch time I'm like what are you doing I mean, if I have a treat, sometimes they, they, they have some, sometimes they don't. It depends how, um, what we're having for a start, because a lot of food they don't eat, but um, it's not expected. And that's the big thing for me, expectation. If I give something, it's a gift. If somebody expects it, I don't give nothing. Um, it's a bit like kids at Christmas. The kids know I give away sweets because I'll throw them off the balcony and they scramble for them. Um, now, when they're expecting them, they might have to wait a couple of days because I won't give them to them until they're not, not asking me for them. Because for me, a gift is a gift. As soon as somebody wants it, it's, it's lost that shine. And I think the Philippines that happens a lot because of this external OFW income coming in. The aunts and uncles abroad are paying for the education, the allowances, the lazy mother or whatever that hasn't done a stitch in her life that is funded by her brother overseas, the, uh, um, the extended family all living off this regular income of somebody that doesn't come home um, except for maybe a couple of weeks to a month a year. For me, um, the respect for money is gone. The, the value of that money is gone. There's no attachment of how hard these members of the family work. So that's why I encourage any value money has to be added. It needs to be shown that there's a value to it and the work that's gone in, the effort's gone in. Um, because a lot of time people haven't had that. I mean, my in-laws are quite uh, modest and humble people. Um, they work hard their own lives, so it's not... I've been very, very lucky that way. Um, my mother-in-law started as a seamstress at the age of 15 um, and retired um, just before Zoe was born. And when I say retired, that's when the store got set up and she worked from home um, to help look after Zoe. At the same time, my father-in-law works all his life. So they have a value of money. Um, one of the things my father-in-law said to me, uh, said to my wife, who said to me is, because he wouldn't go with the shopping to the malls. And the reason was, he says, well, what happens is you see this trail of family going behind the, the white guy and his partner because they're all there for free shopping and free food. It's like, that's not me. So... At that point, you already got, there is no expectation for my in-laws. Um, 
and that's why I'm quite happy to help them, you know. But at the same time, they're helping themselves anyway. I mean, they, they look after the apartments and we go 50-50 on the rent with it, you know. What's it hurt me? I'm overseas. They benefit, we benefit. Um, and we continue to develop things in the Philippines and we also know the animals are well taken care of. If we had the the member of family that was milking it like no tomorrow, they wouldn't get a penny. We've had that scenario already um, from extended family. They were cut off very early on um, because there's a lot of promises going, oh, it's for this and that, and then it's not it's for something else. And as soon as that trust is gone, that's it. Money's gone. It's cut off completely. But where do you um, decide what to invest in the family? First thing is, all the sibling nonsense is not your problem. Don't get tied into it. So the fact is, you're not there to support the entire family. You're there to, you know, if you're marrying somebody, it's not a case of you marrying them, um, you marrying the family and they're marrying your wallet. Um, it's a case of you're marrying their daughter. And that's it. All the extended stuff, that's family issues. Those family issues existed before you arrived in Norway, exi exist long after you're dead, um, dead and buried. Because a lot of it is cultural. A lot of it is people stopping work at 25, um, having kids too young, having kids out of wedlock and things like that with no plans, having their boyfriends run away and it's all the same problems all the time and it, the cycle isn't changing. Um, there is a development of the middle classes in the Philippines which is sort of pushing its head out now where, they, where they're becoming the 2.4 children, um, the 2.4 children family. They're not having the 11 kids, the 7 kids or whatever, they're having the two. Um, and then there's just the parents. They are not buying into the having as many kids as possible so that you you can retire on the uh, fact that your kids are going to carry you through life. All that's changing. but. That takes time and it's, it's normally key areas like uh, Makati where that sort of thing's happening from the business communities which are a bit more westernized. Now, the important thing with this is the Philippines is changing but the, the most important bit for you is not to be blackmailed into something you do not agree with. And the key to all that is getting it on the table early on and the responsibilities are what you agree there and then. Um, if somebody says, well, I've got, you know, you, you're marrying somebody that looks after their grandmother and they have no other income, um, you'll have to have some thoughts on what's going to happen there because you may be uh, stuck emotionally because if nobody looks after the grandmother, uh, your wife isn't going to be the happiest person on the earth because um, if something happened she'll be guilt ridden for the next 20 years or whatever so um, you just need to sit and think about all this stuff communication is key to it just keep talking about it explain what you want in life what what is her expectations what is the family expectations because you need to understand how that relationship is going to work because otherwise it will never work you'll just end up with more problems. That's why some say, oh, we'll move, move away. Moving away doesn't stop the phone ringing. Moving away doesn't stop family visiting. Moving away and then hiding from the family is not the way to deal with it. Confronting it head on and setting the ground rules and just making everybody aware this is what's happening and nothing else is the way to deal with it. It's not an easy thing to do, um, but long term is the best thing to do uh, because everybody knows where they stand. Alright, thanks for watching.